Hello and welcome to QBasic Programming Lesson 2. What we're going to learn to do is print out all the numbers from 1 to 10 on the screen like this. Uh, we're going to do this in a few different ways to help us to start thinking about how we can write more efficient code. So let's take a look at the code behind this incredible visual extravaganza sitting on the screen. So we've got our remark. Always start your program with a remark at the beginning, telling people what you're going to be doing. And then, um, well, I've laboriously typed in 10 different print statements. And although it works, it was a pretty tedious way of programming the task. OK, it wasn't quite as bad as it seems. If you look at this little shortcut here, if I type in question mark space 11, hit enter, notice that the system recognizes the question mark and automatically converts it into a print statement. So I didn't have to type print all the time. I just wrote the question mark version of that. So let's run that again. See what happens. In best spinal tap style, it goes up to 11. Still, nevertheless, I don't like this program, so I'm just going to highlight the whole thing, hit the delete key, and there we go. We're going to look at a much nicer way of programming this. Right, let's look at our first line. So the first line we're going to type is 4i equals 1 to 10. This is a for next loop, a simple loop that sets up a variable called i, um, which is a little box to store numbers in, and we'll call it i. And then it, in turn, stores all the numbers from 1 to 10 in that box in the loop. Look what happens when I hit enter. The line goes red, which is QBasic's way of letting you know that your lovely piece of code won't work. Look down here on the status line. It tells you we've got a 4 without next on line 2. Um, there's a problem on line 2 of my program. Notice that my cursor is flashing away here um, at the start of line 3 and down here it says 3, 1. That's telling me that the cursor is on line 3 and it's in position 1 at character 1. So if I move my cursor up, okay, we can see now it says here 2, 1, we're on line 2, character 1. So hopefully this little bit down here will help you to find problems with your program when it goes wrong in future. Now in fact in this case the problem isn't actually on line 2, it's just that four loops come in two parts. To complete the instruction I'm going to write next i and when I've done that look the red line's gone the status line's quite happy and uh, that's now a complete for loop so when it runs this the system puts the value 1 into the variable i to start off with the control then passes down to this next i statement that adds 1 to the number in i and then it checks to see whether it's bigger than 10 if it's not bigger than 10 it will jump straight back up to that line and then carry on around the loop and then it reaches the next statement adds 1 to i again if it's not bigger than 10 then it will jump back up as soon as i has had it has had 1 added to it and it becomes bigger than 10 then control will just pass on out of that loop well that's all pretty clever stuff but it is pointless if there's no other code in between the start and the end of the loop so let's go back and insert some more code to be repeated 10 times in the loop Now, a couple of things there. First of all, notice that um, as soon as I typed in print i, the system indented that for me. So I can see what's within my loop. I've got my foot, the start of the loop, the end of the loop. Everything that's, that's repeated within the loop is indented slightly in my code. Now in QB64, it does that automatically for you. In the older version of QBasic, it won't do that. But this is a really nice presentational technique so that you can easily see which parts of your code are being repeated. So that's a really good idea to do. So what does the print i actually do? Well, it just prints whatever value is in the variable i, which first time around the loop will be 1, second time around will be 2, and so on. Very neat. So let's run it and check and see what happens. So remember, before we run programs, we should always do file, save, um, just in case anything horrible goes wrong. Let's run this, press start. There we go. Exactly the same output, but for a lot less code. Now imagine we were trying to do something a hundred times. Our loop structure would save us an awful lot of typing. Now before we finish, let's just have a look at what's in variable i at the end. 
I said that the next I statement added 1 to I and checked if it was now bigger than the 10 that we put in the for statement at the beginning. So last time round it becomes 11 and it doesn't jump back to the top. So let's add a final print here. So print I, file, save, and run it again. See now it prints up to 11. So the final value as it came out of the loop was 11. Now one last little trick. We can make i go up or down in value throughout the loop and we can make it jump in whatever steps we want and we can make it finish when we want. But be careful or you might create an infinite loop which never stops. So firstly let's type step 2 at the beginning there and run that. And what we can see is that it started off at 1, as we said, and then it added 2 to it every time. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. They were within the loop. It then added 2 to that and it became 11. And when it plopped out the bottom of the loop, it typed 11. OK, let's change that 2 to a 3 and see what happens now. There we go. Started off at 1, added 3 every time. 1, 4, 7, 10. That was in the loop. It then came out of the loop after it had added 3 to 10 and got 13. Now 13 is obviously bigger than 10. It's not going to go back in. Well, here's another little trick that we can do. So let's try this one. We can go from 10 to 1 in steps of minus 1. So let's run that. See what happens. See, so it started off at 10, and then it took away 1 every time, or it added negative 1 every time. And as soon as it became less than 1, which was our uh, final condition, uh, then it jumped out of the loop. And then it, after it had finished the loop, the value 0 was in variable i. OK, so here's another loop here for i equals 1 to 10. So it's going to start off at 1, going to add 1 every time. It's going to print out the value of i. Now in my loop, I've messed around with the value of i. OK, so what's going to happen is it's going to be 1. It's then going to go down to 0. It's going to add 1 to that. It's going to stay at 1. It goes back to the top of the loop. And then again, it's going to print out 1, take away 1 from that, add 1 to that. So these two instructions here are kind of cancelling each other out. Now when I run this, what's happening here is this is, can you see this flashing down here? It's printing 1 forever. So the uh, we've got a bit of a problem. My program is, is running and running and running. It's an infinite loop situation. Um, and that's it. I'm stuck. Lost forever. Um, but there is one little trick here. If you press Control and then your pause break button, it will just kill the running of the program there and then. Uh, so that's a nice uh, little way to get out of that. Um, right, so that's in a nutshell is all you need to know about four next loops. And now you can repeat a section of code as many times as you like without having to keep typing it all again. Well, good luck with that and I hope you find it useful.